Hello, my name is Matthew Ricks from Kieran My Racing. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you guys today, uh, albeit remotely from Melbourne. Uh, we're here to talk about creating a sports science division within a horse racing operation. As I said, my name is Matthew Ricks. I'm head of, head of data and performance here at Kieran My Racing. Uh, Kieran My Racing, for those of you who don't uh, know us, uh, we're a, a large racing, uh, thoroughbred racing operation in the set, based in the southeast of Australia, predominantly in Victoria and New South Wales. Uh, we have 600 horses in our system, generally between 300 and 350 in work at any one time across eight locations. Our head trainers are Kieran Ma and David Eustace, who many of you will know quite well. Um, with me today is Romy and Josh as part of our data and performance team. Um, and we also have Katrina Anderson, who's based up in Ballarat. Uh, as an overview, this team was set up in 2021 um, to build on the existing work that was already going in within the stable um, around our tracking data for our horses training. Um, the, the, the team was built primarily to start focusing on coordinating the activity in the data and science space, uh, building business capability, business assets. Um, we've recently built our proprietary data warehouse where all our data from our disparate systems comes in. Um, and the ambition is to achieve uh, what many other sporting codes are doing around the world, be it basketball, American football, Australian football, and soccer football for you guys. <laughs> um, we think there's a really huge opportunity within horse racing to leverage data and analytics and sports science to gain a competitive advantage. And um, yeah, we're 12 months in kind of to the process now. We, we see, we're starting to see some really good results and some really good buy-in across our wider team members. Uh, we work predominantly within four areas of the business and that's training, racing, um, uh, customer and operations and bloodstock. Uh, I mentioned the customer and operations because uh, we're really excited to be able to bring a more richer data experience to our owners um, and providing them content um, that's consumable and interesting um, around their horses training and progress um, and, and we're really excited to deliver that uh, to our owners in 2022. Uh, as you'll hear throughout this presentation, we all have diverse backgrounds. Um, Katrina and Romy are um, very, very experienced horsewomen in their own right. Uh, Josh and I both come from wagering backgrounds, uh, and Josh is highly, highly proficient technically um, and a very, very smart data scientist. Uh, enough from me. Uh, I'll pass over to Romy now. Uh, Romy, how, um, how have you found um, your integration into the team, and can you explain uh, your role as a performance analyst to the audience? Yes, hi. Um, so, as Matt said, uh, Katrina and I, we are both working um, as performance analysts, and we are both from horse background, so we look a bit more at the horse side of things, we understand the horse physiology and um, behavior, as well as um, the methods of training and what does a horse do on the track, etc. Trying to link um, data and uh, you know, knowing horses. Obviously, we work very closely with trainers, assistant trainers, people on the ground to help us. Um, so what we do really is we use different technologies to um, follow a horses, uh, our horses' fitness. We have heart rate monitors that we use on the track. Um, ridden horses and we have some that we use on treadmill we do use a lot of um, high-speed treadmill here in australia and particularly at caramel racing um, we also take lactates of our horses um, for to follow their fitness we have a very precise treadmill program that we use that helps us understand how the horse um, fitness is evolving um, we also weigh our horses regularly um, keep an eye on how they eat. Um, all those parameters um, allow us to have a, a, a global image of um, a horse life in the stable and um, allows us to also understand what, what changes, what, what is, um, needs to remain the same, um, etc. 
So with that, we get training every day from either a treadmill or on the track that we, uh, with Katrina, look at every day. Uh, we get quite a lot because we have a lot of horses, so it's, um, it's our job to overview it every day, um, look at the, the update the trainer might have done, sometimes get on the, in the stables ourselves, um, help run, see how the horse is, is the horse breathing loud, like all the little things, we need to know everything so that we can do the best analysis. And then <clears throat> the main objective is to tailor a program for horses because um, we have so many, we can't make them all do the same training and we, uh, with Katrina, try to understand the horse's uh, physiology and, and, and try to tell the trainer or help them figure out what is the best way for this particular horse to be trained. Um, so like in humans, they train in different heart rate zones. Um, some of them will be uh, better doing slow work and a little, little less f fast work, um, depending on the horse. So tailoring program for horses is a big part, of, at least a big objective, a big aim of what we want to do um, to try to improve um, the training and, and make it the best for the horse welfare as well to bring them to the peak fitness before race and um, and this way the, oh, the last thing that we do is helping prevent injuries, um, helping detect issues, uh, breathing issues, um, heart issues, uh, locomotion issues, uh, different things that uh, we can keep an eye on if we have regular data and regular um, <laughs> and regular stuff um, on, on the horses, uh, given by riders, trainers, uh, the data itself. And uh, that's also a main um, goal to reduce um, wastage in, in, in a stable and be able to have lots of different quality of horses, but all of them um, put to the best of their abilities, no matter if they're group one horses or handicapped horses doesn't matter. Um, so that's what we do um, in an everyday kind of kind of thing. And then, um, yeah, we do have uh, different case studies that have brought us to understand the, the, the stable better. Um, like we do locomotion profiling, so we also use genetic testing on our horses. Um, combined with the data that we get um, is very exciting because it's been helping us a lot to um, understand better which distance is the best for which horse. Um, so the combination of those two has been really helpful and, and uh, proven very successful on, on the track. Um, we also do um, cr try to the, find the lactates and uh, performance of the horse. Is it linked? How can we use it? Um, and the uh, good thing with the heart monitors that we put on, which are, are in EOS, is the possibilities of having ECGs that can be reviewed by veterinary and uh, that is a big thing in injury prevention as well. In terms, Romy, of um, the, the technology that we use with the trackers on our devices, would you say that um, beyond kind of like the, the deeper analysis, would you say that on a day-to-day -day basis that um, the tracking of our training data, um, the two main objectives would be around ensuring that, ensuring that the horse is working as intended in, in terms of its plan and then also that the work that is being done is having the actual desired effect on their on their fitness. Yeah, hundred um, percent. That's actually a very good point because in Australia, um, the, the the sprinting method is um, keeping an eye on the speed of the horse, uh, trying to understand can this horse go fast and everything. So trainers used to clock their horses, which is very particular to Australia and uh, United States as well. But this data is very helpful for that to monitor. Is the horse going the right speed? Did he do too much? Did he do not enough? Um, and that's definitely something we, we look at and is easier to look at because we have so many different facilities. You can't always understand like the speed. And sometimes when you're riding, as we know, it's it's difficult to assess. And um, and definitely um, does 
some horses will, will work at the same speed, they'll both do work. They didn't go too fast, they didn't go too slow, but one horse is handling it, the other one is not. And um, that sometimes is difficult to see without mm. the actual data of the, the heart rate and the recovery. Because some horse might blow really hard, but it's just noise. Some horse might look like they're fine, but they're actually taking it really hard. So that's definitely, yeah, like you said, the, the, at, on a day-to-day -day basis, something that is the most important for us. The horse handle the work or not? If not, how do we make it better? Do we give him a few days rest? Do we um, do less work? More Just work, yeah, exactly. More work or... <laughs> Something that's really exciting for me is when we see that kind of work come through um, to the racetrack. So we had a really, really great example recently with Hitotsu winning the yeah. Australian Guineas. And, and Kieran and David both made mention that the role that the data played to give them the confidence that the horse had handled all its lead up work well and was fit enough to run first up over a mile, which is not a traditional kickoff point in Australia. Yeah, that, that is definitely a um, very, very good thing that we've achieved lately is, um, like you said, being able to know that this horse, it's a bit more traditional here in Australia to use racing as a way of getting your horse fit. Um, and sometimes horses like Hitotsu, a light horse, might not need that many races and, and maybe a races before that would have just um, not been really the best mm. and knowing with the data that he was at his best, his previous training uh, pre-race were amazing. He's an extremely fit horse, he's got a lot of speed, he's, he's, he was ready to run that distance at that level and they were quite confident be, because we had all this data leading up to it and from his last prep, we yes. knew where he was at the end of his prep when he was already performing and um, we know it was even above what he was before his last race, which gives a lot of confidence to the trainers that they might already have, but it's just confirming everything is in the green and you don't need to, to do a, a first 1400 meter race to make sure the horse is fit yes. and he's handling it. You already know that he's gonna handle it. Yeah, so yeah. that was definitely a good, very good uh, example of. Yeah, um, Josh, um, I'll come to you now. Um, Obviously, coming from outside the horse racing game um, with a different sort of background and skill set, um, what have what have you been kind of looking at as we kind of as I mentioned we've been building kind of proprietary assets with data data warehouse? Uh, what kind of capability um, are you looking at in terms of automation um, as we go down this path? Yeah, so basically, as Matt touched upon, building a data warehouse of all our sources of data. Um, coming in from different external sources. We have our, our um, weight for age performance ratings from one source, sectional data in Australia we have coming from another source, our training data from um, the Equimetra Arianeo trackers. Um, we have data from external, uh, internal, sorry, uh, horse management systems that um, bring in all the data about the ownership, um, which we can enhance that ownership communication experience. Um, and basically trying to automate um, across the four pillars which we work across, um, which Matt touched upon. Um, so really, the training, the training data, we could, we've got um, capability to automate how well um, the horses have trained in work, and um, we can see basically a summarised view of that, and then we can easily uh, communicate that through to the, to the trainers and the assistant trainers across the stable on internal communication platforms and they can see how well the, uh, the horses have tracked. Um, in terms of the, the post-race data of performance, we can, we can easily communicate the sectional data and things like any, any spikes in ratings that um, horses have performed at, the, at their recent races, um, which is key for, for Kieran and Dave to see as they really appreciate that data and see a quantified number, not just a qualitative figure inside their heads um, to see that the horse has performed um, better. And linking that up with the training data um, is the real key, is seeing that what correlates between the pieces of work and spikes or, or letdowns in possibly rating figures um, is, is the really interesting stuff. Um, and obviously, as we touched upon with Hitotsu uh, in the Australian Guineas um, last weekend, 
uh, it was a, it was a huge task for any horse to go to a Group One um, over 1600. But you know, with with our data, we could see that um, his figures were lying in the top five sort of percent of the population of trainings at um, Ballarat we had in terms of heart, his his uh, his recovery and also his timing um, was key there um, to say he was ready to take it to that new level as Romy suggested um, before. Uh, so that's that's a real big key. Down the, down the track we'll probably be touching upon some um, unsupervised learning models to really um, dig deeper into this into the data that we get from Equimetro of the trainings linking that up um, and seeing the correlations between um, any other pieces of information that we have in the stable of how um, horses are, you know, their, their weight and things like that um, and how they eat, their trot ups, we have all this data on hand that we can um, possibly link all the training data to to see the, the correlation, the effect of, of each training performance um, sort of internally in the stable. I think that's something that's really encouraging for me is the um, the kind of progress we've been able to make already in, in such a short space of time, but with the amount of data that we're bringing in from all our disparate systems, there's actually so much that we can do with that and so many insights to be yeah. derived in the future. Uh, Robbie, as we kind of start to wrap up here, um, do you just want to uh, just kind of, what are some challenges that you faced um, with your role, but then also that you've noticed with the, the team, obviously data, Data is uh, a relatively, you know, data in sports science isn't something that's widely used in thoroughbred racing. So, um, and whenever there's change, there's always going to be some resistance. And, and so what have you found has, has been some of the challenges? Yeah, so I think it, it's, it comes from the fact that um, racing is quite a traditional um, sport at the beginning and relies a lot on, on horsemanship, which is not, you can't quantify it and mm. it's, it's, it's hard to, wrap your head around but um, the, the the fact that it that it's like that makes it difficult for trainers to accept um, outside and data that is um, maybe sometimes challenging their way of thinking um, so that was definitely a challenge we were lucky because um, Karen and Dave are very open-minded and mm -hmm. we're ready to give it a go and we're kind of just waiting for us to prove them that it was worth it um, so we try to do that by still keeping in mind that horsemanship is not replaceable and data itself is, you can't do anything with it. Complimentary. Yeah, complimentary, definitely. You have to, to put them together. Um, for that, um, you need a, a few wins at the beginning to, to help them um, put confidence in, in you. And um, we had that, so that, that was good. It, it takes a little bit of time. Um, the other challenge is to understand your own stable. So even if you know horses, even if you know training, um, the parameters of your own stable are very specific. And at the beginning, you don't have enough data to completely understand, so you're kind of like walking like this in the dark. And then now it's really good because we have so much. We know our horses, we know our locations, and if we open a new location, we know our horses. So it makes it easier for us to understand everything. Um, and then obviously it's sometimes quite hard to get um, people on the ground um, invested in something that they might not always um, have access to because you know the data comes into our office yeah. but not everyone can see it um, so it's also our job to communicate on it and, and make sure that everyone understands why we're doing this and um, yeah that can be a bit challenging sometimes yeah yeah and we do have a lot of data. That's also a <laughs> something yeah. that is challenging. Um, yeah, and that's it's been. I think even like with with those kind of challenges, I think we're doing really you know good job to try and overcome them and get people. And we're very lucky that Kieran is so invested in yeah. this process, and um, he's the one that's been really driving the program. So it's great to to work for someone who's who's so engaged yeah. like that. Yeah, quite um, unique. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well. Um, yeah, thank you very much, guys, for having us again. And, um, and yeah, we look forward to hopefully seeing you and being in touch with a few of you in, in future. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.